Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Once again, I see I got my, you know, I can have everything ready to go and then change my shirt or something and it all goes awry. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> How are you guys? Hello, hello. Nice to have you here today. Oops. All right. Got to get my got to get my act together here. Oh, here we go. Okay. I got too many I got too many mice running around on my table today. <laughs> oh, so there's my fairy treasures. I'm glad you're here so you can so you can watch me show your stuff today, Angie. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Oh, it's nice to see everybody. Everybody's just kind of coming, wandering in and chatting hello and all that. I'm having a little spot of tea. And then we're going to get crack lacking here. So how's your week been, everybody? I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com, in case you didn't know who I was, if this is the first time you've ever found me. Um, this is a live broadcast. If you're watching the recording, thank you for watching. This is a live broadcast that I do every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, so that's what's going on here. And um, I like to call this Drama Free Friday. Yes, I do. Because we just take all the drama out of our lives for the next couple of hours and just put it somewhere else. There's plenty of drama in the world. We just don't need to bring it in here, right? All right. So it's great to have everybody popping into the chat. I'm just going to give everybody a few minutes here. <laughs> I'm not the only one who had a crazy week, I see. <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? We're still we're still dealing with a lot of heat. So any of you in the northern hemisphere, I'm sure you're experiencing the same thing because I hear it is pervasive. Ah. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mika. And on YouTube Live, you have to, you can't flood the chat. And by flooding the chat, they mean typing too quickly. <laughs> That's true. They'll time you, they'll put you on a timeout. I think it's an effort. Hi, Lindy. Just saw your name pop in the chat. Um, I think it's an effort to try to control some of the uh, people who might come in and try to spam, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. Who knows? So I've got a good bunch of people showing up here. So while we're, before we really get started, if you'd pop in there, what, um, what countries you are from, I always love to see that. Countries or states, if you're in the states, what state you're in. It's always great to, to see that. Um, so let's see, what else? Well, I'm going to wait and do the show and share stuff here in just a minute. Uh, so we have Ines from the Netherlands, Texas, Idaho. Um, mm, 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 mm. Whoa, it's going quick now. California, New York State, Las Vegas, baby, <laughs> South Carolina, Minnesota, Uruguay. Is that what I'm reading? Uruguay? Really? Well, that that's I have not seen Uruguay come up in the chat before. That's great. Um, got a couple people from the Netherlands, Louisiana, Belgium. India, Canada. We have three people from the Netherlands, it looks like. That's wonderful. Washington, steamy New York City. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Um, Northeast UK. Oh, Magdalena, that's wonderful. And I'm, I hope I'm saying your name properly. I don't know. That doesn't always, it doesn't always roll out of my mouth the way I think it's going to. Another Louisiana girl. 
So I'm seeing some new names in the chat. So thank you so much for coming and taking your time out of your day to join us. Scotland. Oh, that's fun. It's just really fun to, to see all the, the different countries represented. That is really fun. So, yeah, so while I um, partake in illegal fluids on the table, how about if we start chatting a little bit? Then when we get serious, I'll, I'll take it and move it. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Another California girl. I'm just letting everybody just come on in and um, just just chat for a minute. So it doesn't seem like we're doing a whole lot. <laughs> you love me, Judy Patootie? Thank you. I love you back. I love all my viewers. I really do. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I know that it takes time and effort to be here, and I really do acknowledge that and appreciate you so much. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for taking your time to spend with me. I'm glad you're here. So we are um, getting, we're about halfway through Mining Your Muse now over on howtogetcreative.com. That doesn't mean you can't join it. You can still get in on the fun. Uh, the live show and share class, they're not classes, but they're live show and share gatherings, we'll call them happen every Wednesday and at the same time and so those are really those are really great I just I love that live component of the class because then the students get to join me talk to me ask questions but my favorite part of all of that is they get to show what they've been working on and that is just the best so it's not too late for you to join there you know anything that I'm referencing today if you look in the the box below the video where you're seeing me there's a box there and you can click on show more or a little arrow or something and you'll be able to see all the links and so the link to Mining Your Muse is there so if you want to um, take part in that you still can and let's see oh I hope you guys stay safe I really do we got flooding going on around different parts of the world um, <laughs> Mika says, if my friend wants to come over on Friday, she knows it is Barb Owen evening. <laughs> so she's going to have to be subjected to me, huh? <laughs> if she wants to come visit, she's going to have to be there and watch Barb too. Hi, CB. Hi, Sharon. So I didn't call everybody out by name today, but um, I've been watching as your names are popping into the chat. So I'm just thrilled that you're here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to show this wonderful box of happy yumminess that I got from My Fairy Treasure. She's in the chat today. I didn't, uh, since you're in the chat today, hey, Kat, Angie, you're in the chat. Is it okay if I show all this stuff? Because I, I sent a message to you via YouTube because I, I didn't have your email, so I sent it to you back on the YouTube private messages or whatever. Um, and I didn't have a chance to go check if you'd answered today. So I just want to confirm that it's okay. I'm assuming it is, but I just want to make sure. She may have stepped away from her computer too, and I know there's a lag, so, you know, all that stuff. If she doesn't want me to show it, she's just going to have to say, stop, stop, because I'm going to go ahead and start. Oh, she says, for sure, girl. <laughs> Okay, all right, let me put the illegal fluids over out of the way. All right. So this is the beautiful card that, um, get my camera straight here, straight with the world. This is the beautiful card that she sent. Hello, Jan and Janet and everybody. So please consider yourselves welcomed and and um, come on in. So this is from Angie Bell, My Fairy Treasures, and this is one of this is a print of one of her paintings, I believe. She's now she's in the chat. Chat. <laughs> Carol says hi, Chance and Charlie behind the door. Yes, 
Yes, safely stowed behind the door. That is, that's a fact. They are safely stowed. Hopefully getting drunk in another sun puddle. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, see yesterday's tweets. <laughs> so this is um, a print from one of Angie Bell's paintings which is lovely. Looks like it's a mixed media piece. Her, I, This is the first time I've gotten to see her work up close and personal. Hi, Marion. I, um, I saw, I've seen it on other people's streams, but I haven't seen it in person, so this was really a treat. And um, so that is the inside of a card. Believe, her card, Believe in Your Dreams. And this was for my birthday. She sent these things to me for my birthday. And she is My Fairy Treasures, and that She's My Fairy Treasures on YouTube. She has a great YouTube channel, and she also has an Etsy shop, and it's the same, My Fairy Treasures on Etsy, I believe. So, check her out. Hey, Janice. So, check her out. Yeah, go to her Etsy. Janet says, go to her Etsy shop. Amazing art. So, there you go. So, that was from one of the viewers in the chat. So, then she sent me... I have very few coloring books, um, but I now have more because Angie sent me some. So this is Collector's Corner Curios to Color. Have fun while you relax. Don't we all need that? This has got some fun images in it. And you know what I end up using these images for? I don't, I, I truly don't color them, but I love using the images as reference for other things, which I find really fun to do. I just haven't started coloring them yet. So these little pattern images and, you know, I have several of the, um, are they mat matrush? Oh, I'm not even going to go there because I, it suddenly blipped out of my head. I have several of these little stacking Russian dolls. <laughs> Hi, Kasha. So there are lots of really interesting pages in these. But my favorite thing, as I said, with any of these, my favorite thing is referencing the patterns, the shapes, um, you know, a whole page full of bugs. Who doesn't like a whole page full of bugs as long as they're in a color book? I, I think they're wonderful. <laughs> and Muppet would heartily agree with that because she would not... She does not want to ever see a bug again in her whole life because she just got over her her bad sting. Uh, oh, look. A whole page of pattern sponsors. <laughs> That's cute. I might actually have to color that one, don't you think? Don't you think I should do that? That looks like it's begging to be in a journal page. But that That's a nice book. Collector's Corner, Curios to Color, Time for Tea coloring book. Angie knows I'm a tea drinker used to be coffee drinker. Now I'm more of a tea drinker. And um, so all different things to deal with tea and goodies. And can I show the cover again? This one is time for tea. And the other one I showed so far is collector's corner curios to color. And you know on YouTube you can always scroll back. You can actually scroll back in real time. So if you miss something, you can actually go back in real time. So that's a cool thing about YouTube. So look at all those good, look at all those yummy things. I mean, really. Mm. And teapots. I do love teapots. And these pages are perforated, so you can pull them out. The paper is quite thin. So if you wanted to do one, you know, if you wanted to do this with anything other than colored pencils, I would say you need to copy it onto cardstock at least, if not watercolor paper. <laughs> and she says, I knew you would love that cat page. I did. I do. And she's a tea girl too, so tea is divine after all. Tea is divine. Yep. But it's just got it's just got some really fun okay, trust me, I'm never gonna look like this. First of all, if you have a cup that is so tiny that it will fit in the palm of your hand like that, it is not worth drinking. This, this is worth drinking, people. This is not. <laughs> That's just for show. 
There's just some really sweet, sweet images in here. And a cupcake, cupcake stand. Just some really fun ideas and so just some great, the patterning ideas in these books are just phenomenal. They really are. To use for doodling, to use for, I mean, look at this. Look at the steam with all the patterns. That is wonderful. I mean, that is really cool. What a fabulous idea. And then this is the other one. This is the designer series Henna to Color. Um, I do know a good cup when I see it, CB. I definitely do. <laughs> I definitely do. Now, this book reminds me of what we did last week, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. But a lot of these henna designs, in fact, I had a comment on, from one of the viewers on uh, YouTube that had watched the recording that said, had commented about that, that she thought what I did last week when I was doing the doodle patterns on rocks, that she thought they very much resembled henna patterns. So, yeah, this is really fun. Lots of great ideas. Just, I mean, look at this. That's great. Matrosh Matroshka? Is that what they're called? Matroshka? Matroshka. Well, anyway, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, what the correct name is. But isn't that, those are great. If you've enjoyed this coloring book, look for more design series books. So that's what this is. Design series and their Kappa books. K-A-P-P-A -P -P -A books publishers. So thanks for those those great books there. And then she put in a note that says, please enjoy the handmade texture plates. And I'm telling you, these are really cool, people. These are really cool. I think, you, didn't you send some of these to um, Dee Dee also? The henna, yeah, the henna book really is. It really is great. So didn't you send some of these to Dee Dee as well? You sent some of these. I saw somebody had some of these. But she's done these, I think, with joint compound or some or wall compound or something. The texture is very thick. So these would be great for rubbings or to um, to use with the, um, the jelly plate. They're a little rough on the top, so I think before I use them on the jelly plate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand them a little bit. But they would be super for for putting something over and using them as they are for rubbing plates. So either one would be great. Yes, she said yes, she did. This is this is a really, I mean, they're all great. Um, but this one has so much detail. Now, what's in the background is um, book covers, I think. She's just used old book covers as her, as her background because they're nice and sturdy, which is really nice. But this is a real, I mean, the detail on this is just phenomenal. And they're, I mean, they are, you can tell they are sturdy. They are not going to go anywhere. And this one is Earth, Wind, and Fire. So another really cool, they're just, that's a great idea to do this. Great idea. And then this one. I love this. I love this. To me, this reminds me of a rock wall. And I just love this. Love the the um, the shapes. And I love the uneven texture of it. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. I don't know how you did these and kept them from being, uh, kept them from something getting into them while they dried. I would have I could do this and then I would have a cat foot here and a cat foot there. <laughs> yes, I would have cat feet in them. Yeah, they're, um, this is the Chronicle of the Trojan Football Alumni Club. <laughs> it's a great recycle. So this is nice too, with all the flowers. Isn't that great? That feels a great, super idea, super idea. And this, okay, she's going to have to tell us how she did this. Because, again, I saw this. I saw this when uh, she sent one of these to Inkwell, Dee Dee, or Inkywell, depending on where you're finding her. Um, I, saw, I saw one of these, but you cannot fully appreciate this until you see it in person. You absolutely cannot. 
So this is done with file folders. It looks, now I'm going to guess here, but Angie's in the chat who made this, and so she can tell you, answer questions, and so forth. Yeah, a cat says here a foot, there a foot, everywhere a cat foot. That is, that is the truth, my friend cat. That is my, my friend cat saying that. <laughs> oh, hello, Kalina, Kalina Koo. Kalina, I'm going to call you Kalina. Is that okay? Hopefully. It is beautiful. It is absolutely, it is stunning. Hi, Josie. We got several Josies in uh, in the group. That's wonderful. It does look like hot glue, and this looks like a um, this looks like a legal size file folder is what it looks like to me. And I think she's used a couple of them because there is a there is a seam back here. So she she's going to have to tell you. She's going to have to tell you what she did. And the colorations on here, I'm not sure what she did. They have the appearance of perfect pearls or something like that. Um, so anyway, you're going to have to pick her brain because she's in the chat there. But it's a portfolio. And see, so flip up the lid. I mean, this must have taken a while to create, you know? So you flip it up. And inside, she has all kinds of yummy, yumminess inside, OK? Isn't that cool? I just think that, and it has such a nice feel to it. So I just wanted to really give you a chance to just really look at that. Hello, Donna. Welcome. It's just really cool. You know, she may have um, she may have these on her YouTube channel. I don't know, but I will tell you, they she does a beautiful job does a beautiful job. So these are prints of her artwork. I know that she sells prints of her work. Um, I don't know the names of these. I've heard her talk about them. And now that I have my own, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look up the, um, I'm going to look back at her YouTube channel to get the names. Uh, this is done by Angie Bell, which is my, she is My Fairy Treasures. And you can find her on YouTube and she also has a has an Etsy shop. So, and she goes by My Fairy Treasures. Okay? So this is one of her one of her pieces. So I think what she has is mixed media in the background. It looks like she has collage elements in the background and then she's painted her mermaid. Yeah, they're really lovely. They really are lovely. And I know she has special names for some of these. Um, it's some kind of warrior, right? But I, I've forgotten. There she is. She is. Okay, so she says she has a video on her channel about how to make those folders, not portfolios. Okay, so it's on YouTube. Okay, so you guys can search her channel. Do you know what, do you have any idea what it's called, Angie? What that video was called? You can't put a link in here because YouTube doesn't allow that, but if you can tell me maybe what it's called, I can call it out. Or the other option is if you can um, get that information to me when I put up the recording, I will include that in the description. Hi, Linda. <laughs> I have to laugh at Linda. Um, we, have a, we have an inside joke about Linda. Anyway. So she has she has names for her various characters and um, people and things and they're they're lovely they really are like I know this has a name and I can't remember spirit what are they spirit she's gonna have to tell me <laughs> Linda says hi Barba Yes, it goes back to me telling people to please put their name in the chat phonetically so I'd know how to pronounce it. So she puts in Linda. <laughs> so anyway, see, you had to be there. Anyway, these are really phenomenal. They are, they really are phenomenal. This is another one of her. These are, um, these are from the same series, I believe. These, um, it's like Warrior Spirit or something. She will, hi Miriam. 
she will, I'm sure, tell us in the chat. But now I've got to go back and I've got to look at her, her um, shop, her Etsy shop and everything so I can get the names of these so I know them. They're lovely, just lovely. I'm going to have to put these in a book. So those were in the portfolio. She also sent, sent um, some beautiful napkins. Janet has one of those. Cool. Okay. Uh, pronounce mine. Galina. Galina. Okay. Wait a minute. I got to write that down. Thank you for that. I got to write it down so I'll remember. Galina. Gu. Galina Gu. Galina, where are you from? I forgot. Did you put that in there? It's always fun. Again, I know most everybody has put has put. Um, hi, Virginia. Most people have put their countries in already. I don't know if I missed yours or um, anyway. <laughs> Long week already. Uh, okay, beautiful napkins. Look at these. Yeah, gorgeous napkins. Paper napkins are so useful in mixed media work and art journaling. A really great little birdhouse napkins. Decorative napkins are so, like I said, they're so much fun to use and they are, their variety is incredible. So, Parts of bicycles, old bicycles, which is really nice with the flags. <clears throat> Hi, Cheryl. Okay, from Wisconsin, and it's a Native American name. How cool is that? Galina Goo. It has a really nice, nice rhythm to it. Look at these cups, people. Look at the cups. She sent me two of these. <sighs> yes. Don't, aren't you jealous? Aren't you jealous? But look at those, aren't they fun? Mm. Fun stuff coming up. I feel it, I feel it. <laughs> yeah, Virginia says, I'm loving napkins, buying them everywhere. I know, join the club. And it's nice when you can trade with other people because then you're, um, you know, because sometimes it's hard to use up a pack of 25 or 50 or whatever. <laughs> Kat says, these are for coffee only. No, they're not. These, these are for art journaling. <laughs> and this is a beautiful one, this um, peacock napkin. This is one of those more dinner napkin style napkins with all of the... Um, got images on it. Yeah. I know. Isn't that a sweet, sweet little bird? Oh, huh, beautiful. But look at those. Well, it'd help if you saw the right side up ones. There you go. Aren't those beautiful? Lovely. Thank you so much, Miss Angie Bell. And this one. The the ones that look like like they're already collage pieces are just, they are some of my favorites because you see all the stuff in the background, you know, the postcards and all that kind of stuff and the writing and everything. That gives you such a jump start on, um, on art journaling or cards or whatever you want to work on. So they're really a fun, fun background. They really are beautiful. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Gracie. I am great, Gracie. Thank you so much for asking. And then she included this little pocket. How cool is that? Same technique. I'm guessing the way it looks, it looks to me like she might have used the leftovers from one of the file folders. I'm just guessing here because I'm not sure, but I'm guessing. And inside the this little pocket, done with the same treatment as the file folder, she has a couple of art cards in here. And these appear, these look to me like they must be copies of the art cards um, or copies of the pages she's done. They're really lovely. 
I expected these, honestly, to be her business card. But she only put Angie 2016 on the back, so <laughs> so she fooled me on that one. Hello, JZ, Auntie Michael, better known as JZ. So, aren't they pretty? So, thank you so much. Hi, hi, Artie. So, Angie, thank you so much for sharing all those great. When she says when she says her name is my fairy treasure, she ain't kidding. She is not kidding. She is she is wonderful. Okay, so let me. Okay, Annette says. Wait, I gotta read this. I have a great napkin. On one side it says in caps, if not absolutely necessary, then it's essential. On the other it says from year to year, month to month, week to week, day to day. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> All right, let me set this box of yumminess on the floor. <sighs> well, that was fun. Don't you love seeing things like that? Now, I have to tell you... Um, I'm just rolling off some of the the uh, crumbs from the plates that she did off my craft mat. I have to tell you that when it comes to Happy Mail, Barb is not good at reciprocating. So you, you have to know that up front. <laughs> if, if any of you choose to send something to me, you have to know that you may or may not ever get anything in return. Because it's just the way it is. Um, oh, thank you, Angie. That's very sweet. <laughs> so last week last week we did we painted on rocks because sometimes you don't know what else to do so you paint on rocks so I just thought I would show you I painted a few more I gave one away to a friend of mine who recently lost her husband and she is meeting herself coming and going quite literally at the moment and she is desperate for balance she doesn't even know how desperate she is to find some balance, but I do. And so I gave her one of my rocks, and on the reverse side it says, Balance Rocks. So these are the ones that I've done. I'll show them to you up nice and close. Let me cross my... I, I had to make a list because I had so many things I wanted to show you guys today. Um... Uh, Okay, so let me show them to you up close. See if I can get, see how close I can get you so you can see them. So some of these, and I know there's going to be a glare. Um, some of these I did, like I did most of this on stream last week. If I get the glare off of it, it tips it so much. But then I added a little bit more to some of them. Hello, Teresa. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in forever. So, creativity rocks, right? Um, I don't think I did this one on stream. I can't. I truly can't remember which ones I did on stream. I think I had done this one before. This is fun, rocks. And last night I was out at my um, book club, and they said that there's a whole thing out there that's kind of like geocaching, where you can you hunt for places to find the rocks and then you if you find one you take one and leave one or something I don't know what it's called so one of you guys may already know know what it is oh thanks Gracie so this is Hope Rocks they are painted these are just plain old um, rocks that I bought from the craft store in the floral department and they're painted with white acrylic paint and I did a little bit of um, white paint pen in some places with the I don't know even where I did it I didn't use the paint pen very much now the black on here that's a black paint pen I think or it could have been black doodle dots with the the stylus set from Martha Stewart and then I used a product called Krylon crystal clear because that's what I had on hand and I sprayed very light coats, several coats, and um, and I let them dry. And you can see that it wants to resist. 
the rock surface, even though I cleaned it with alcohol, likes to resist the paint a little bit. But you just kind of go with it, you know. So they have several coats of spray varnish. I did not do any brush on varnish, just a spray varnish. But that particular varnish says very clearly, do not use in humid weather. <laughs> when you live in the state I live in, it is humid here. So the first couple coats I put on were, um, they did not want to dry because I put them on too heavy. So when you use that product, you want to put light coats and you want to let it dry thoroughly. So this is the other side of this one, Art Rocks. Okay. And some of these I don't have words on the back yet, but I just got, you know, it's kind of one of those mindless things that are just, they're just fun to do. Midwest is humid. Teresa knows. So this is Play Rocks. Play Rocks. Yes, it does. And this one, I don't think I did this one on stream. I think I did this one afterward. But it just, you just go with the shape of whatever the stone is to dictate. And I don't have anything on the back of that one yet. But that's what I did. I just went with the, the whatever the shape of the stone was to get, you know, the design. This one's kind of a goofy looking one. But, you know, sometimes you're in a goofy mood. What can I say? Sometimes you're in a goofy mood. It comes out in what you do. There's another one. Well, the weatherman is always right around here, I'll tell you. Not. <laughs> yeah, that's the only profession I know that you can be in, that you can be wrong and still get paid. <laughs> so this is this one. I like this one a lot. This rock was broken. You know, that's the way it was. And uh, so I just worked with it. And I thought it was kind of fun to do a design like that. So this is Hope Rocks. All right, so those are, that is what we did. That's what we did last week. So if you have any questions about that, yeah, some of them do look like seashells. I mean, it's just really interesting. Like this one, I guess this is the one you're talking about, kind of had a seashell look. If I'd painted it a little differently, it would have looked even more like a seashell. Anyway, I envision putting these in a little basket. And then, you know, in the case of my friend, um, I took her one of them. It's nice to have little gifts for people, I find. I really like having stuff like that. So, um, I'm not great at sending gifts to people, but I'm good about being able to give things to people, you know, here and there. Okay, you know, when the right mood, you know, when the time is right. Um... All right, so let me, I'm going to put this here on the table because we're going to talk about this. And I'm going to get rid of the illegal fluids because I just realized they're still on the table. Yikes. Good thing the technical department is not here watching me. Watch, he'll show up now. Just because I said that. Got to give myself a little bit of air because it's really warm in here. <sighs> Hello, Maxie. Whereabouts are you from? <clears throat> okay, so, hi, Susan. Sorry, just periodically I catch somebody's name that I haven't said hello to. <laughs> Okay, where was I? Oh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, follow me at Barb Owen Designs and you will get updates, you know, for uh, when I'm going live. I always send out tweets before I'm going live and that way you um, are reminded that it's Friday and that we're going to be doing all kinds of um, fun stuff, we hope, later in the day. So today... The tweets were re represented by the technical department mascot, Coco. So if you did, if you missed them, if you missed them, follow me on Twitter so you can get the updates. Because on Friday, when those tweets go out, typically 
my Twitter account gets commandeered by some animal. So today it was commandeered by the technical department mascot. So, um, Mika says she has two, let's see, she has two boxes full of seashells. And so she was wondering if she could use them for something like this. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I missed where I missed where Max was from. From Israel. Okay, great. So we have Max and Miriam both from Israel. How cool is that? <laughs> Artie's been watching all week. She's been watching me. Have you been watching me all week? <laughs> Bye, Gracie. Oh, you are very welcome. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is, this is what we're going to do today. I love mandalas, and if any of you have been hanging around me for any period of time, you know how much I love mandalas, because I periodically revisit the whole subject of mandalas, or mandalas, or mandalas, depending on where you are and how you pronounce the word. Um... Just for the sake of ease, I call it mandala because it's just easier to roll off my tongue. So, oh, Max is your son. Okay, cool. Cool. Um. <laughs> no, she's not stalkerish. It's okay. <laughs> so anyway, this is what we're going to be doing today. So these are cards, and I bought the cards from a local craft store. I did find some that I could put a link in the description box. So if you can't find them, there is a link there that you can order them if you don't have access to them. So these are square cards. These happen to be five and a quarter or five and a half. Five and a half, I believe. Let's measure, shall we? I think they're five and a half. Yes, these are five and a half inches square. So I thought they would be fun, I just for something different, because I periodically do different shapes of cards, it, just because it's an easy thing for me to show on the stream. Well, this is my Mandala ebook, and there is, again, a link in the description box below the video. It's called Mandala Melange, and it has all, um, I've forgotten how many patterns now. You'd think I would know right off the cuff. It has 25 flower or 25 mandala patterns in the ebook. So you can print them off and use them. If you have the ability to resize them, like in a Photoshop program or something like that, you can size them down. You can print them off to use on cards like this, and you wouldn't have to draw them. Now, I drew this, and that's what I'm going to be showing you. So these are um, some of the different mandala patterns that I'm leafing through. But like I said, there's 25 different patterns. There's also some color images to give you some ideas of how to color them and so forth. And then just to give you an idea of, um, hello, Carol. And oh, Frederica is sketching a mandala while watching. How cool is that? Um, sorry, I was cut. distracted by the chat. It's kind of like it's kind of like the the squirrel. So these are some ways that I used some of the the um, mandalas after I had colored them. I scan or I um, yeah I guess I scanned them and then reduced the size and printed them off and then used them on pieces and parts on some of the ATCs. So I just thought I'd show you those. So these are all ATC sizes. So once you have them created and colored, if you have the ability to scan them in, or you could take pictures, photographs, and then work with them that way too. But you can make all different kinds of things with them. So like there's just one of them I just backed with a black, um, with black cardstock. So I have little pieces and parts of different ones. And these are just backgrounds. These are papers that I was brayering off when I was jelly plate printing. 
So I just had those brayered off. So they're perfect to cut down and make backgrounds for the ATCs. And then this was a card I actually made for my husband. Same kind of thing, that brayer paper. And then I just used the different mandalas that I had colored, resized them the way that I wanted them, and added them to the card. So you can do lots of different things, even though they're very time consuming, but I love that, that doesn't bother me. They're very time consuming to create, but then if you, you know, um, copy them and resize them, then you can use them multiple ways. Thanks, Teresa. All right, so here is, um, hi, Sabrina. Thanks for coming. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take a piece of watercolor paper because I like to start out with something that you can tell that this has got a greenish cast in the back. This is not completely done. This is tinted with ink tense pencils, but the background started with watercolor paper. So I just have a strip of watercolor paper here. It's just a random strip that I had you know, left from something else. I mean, it's already got paint and stuff on it. And this is not a very heavy watercolor paper. This is a 90 pound watercolor paper. And um, I'm gonna show you how I prepare the background. So I have a container with water. The mouse pointer is in my screen. I don't see it. Is it? And some water. Let me see where where is the mouse pointer? Mouse. Okay. Shouldn't be shouldn't be in the screen. Let me check. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. It's gone now? Okay. All right. I must have moved it. Okay. You saw it, but now I moved it. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Whew. That was exciting. I'm telling you, those mice, they, they're everywhere here. They're everywhere. Thanks for telling me. Okay, so I just have some water, and this is a low, low Cornell brush. It's a goat hair brush, and it does like to shed, which is a pain. And I'm just going to wet this paper. Okay, so I'm just putting some water on it just to get it wet. This is, like I said, this is not a heavy paper, but I have done it with heavier paper as well. But I just like to get it nice and wet. This takes like a minute to do this, just so you know. So I just wet the paper thoroughly, and I don't even know how long the strip is. It's a leftover piece, but it's five inches wide because that was um, the width that I was working with. All right, then I have some washes of acrylic paint. So this this is a bottle, each of these was a bottle of acrylic paint. It got down to about a quarter of the paint left and or, or less, and I filled it back up with water. And I wrap a piece of tape around it so that I know that these are my washes so I don't accidentally pick them up and use them for thinking that they're going to be paint because they will splurt. They will just splurt right out and make a mess. All right, so what I do after I get the paint paper wet is shake up the wash because the water will, or the paint will separate out of it. So I just shake them up really well and then open them. And because my paper is really wet, then I just drop on some color. Okay, so drop on some color and I stay in one color family or the other, meaning I either stay with the warm tones or I stay with the cool tones. Um, that's how I keep from making it look too muddy. So this is a craft, um, lavender and some of these are more opaque than others so you just kind of have to be prepared for a surprise so this is a turquoise so the first one was Laguna uh, let's see where is it 
Laguna turquoise or something. Laguna turquoise. This is a Ceramcoat turquoise. So there's a little different color. So I just dropped some color on it. All right. And then I'm going to get my brush and not have it be too drippy wet. It's still wet, but it's not super drippy. And then I just sort of blend the colors. And if I'm picking up too much of one color, I'll rinse out the brush dry it off just a smidge and then go. All I'm after on this is a, a very thin coating of color. So very thin. So as I move this down you'll see that I'm just just brushing that paint out, okay? Like so. Then I'm just going to take my rag and just kind of soak up because it gets very messy, right? It gets very messy. If you don't like messy, this is not a good project for you at this stage. But it doesn't take very long for it to dry and become unmessy. And so this is some Emperor's Gold. So I'm going to drop a little bit of that in here. Hey, Jean. So now this leans distinctly toward the warm side of, of the color wheel. So if you really want to stay true to the cool versus warm thing, you might want to use silver instead of gold, but gold's what I had. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this here and there. The reason I'm using acrylic paint, first of all, I have it. <laughs> Second of all, um, it allows me to have something that's going to be a permanent surface when it's dry. All right, so I'm done with my water. I'm going to let that alone. I'm going to get rid of the water off the table. And I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Bye, Kalina Goo. Thanks for joining us. And I'm going to soak up some of the puddles of the paint, which also is going to lighten what I've got going on. So I'm just touching it with a paper towel. It also, if you, it, when you wait just a little bit and let it start to dry, it also puts some texture, visual texture, into the paper that's more than just the flat colors of paint, okay? So at this point, then I set this aside and I let it dry. And it doesn't take very long. It might take 30 minutes or something. I don't use a heat gun with it. You could if you wanted. And I'm gonna put all these paints away so that I don't have them causing problems. So just keep mopping up your surface because it does get, um, for a little bit, it's very soupy and very wet and makes everything kind of messy for a little bit, okay? And then on the other side, you can see that it's, it's getting some on the other side because I had some paint on there already. And then that's fine. I think that's cool. So then you have a choice as to which side you want to use, okay? So this is going to get set aside to dry because I have some that are already done. But if you use those acrylic washes like that, it will um, let you use the, the paint clear down to the bottom of the bottle. So what I have is a container here, and this is filled with my empty, or almost empty, bottles of acrylic paint that I've filled up with water and turned them into washes. So, and you can always tell what my favorite colors are because they're multiple bottles in this container of washes. Okay? They are like watercolor, except they're very, they have the look of watercolor, which is what I like, except they're permanent, and that's what I'm going for. 
is permanent. Okay. Any questions so far from anybody? If you do, stick them in the chat. If you'll put them in in caps, that will be very helpful. Um, because I can catch the, I can catch it a lot more quickly if you put it in in caps. So I'm just cleaning up my craft mat a little bit. Get the anything that's wet. Hopefully, get it off of here. Okay. So the next thing that I do, and this doesn't, it doesn't make any difference to me what size mandala I'm doing. It can be little like these, which are a five inch square, or it can be up to, you know, a 12 inch square. Or if you are so inclined, you can do great big ones. Um, oh, thank you, Linda. Um, do I have a new dog? No. No, Coco is the mascot of the technical department. He lives in L.A. He does not live here. He lives in L.A. He is a cutie pie, though, let me tell you. Coco has just learned to roll over. And that is, if you don't think that's cute, I'm telling you. Adorable. Let me just say that. <clears throat> okay, so what I mean by warm versus cool... This is one of the warm tones. This is pink, yellow, and orange. Exactly. That's why I got this shirt. I have another one in a different colorway, but that's why I got them, because if they get paint on them, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's exactly. You're on to me. You're on to me, Kate. So this one is more the warm colorway. This is more the cool tones. This is uh, this has a yellow green, a turquoise, and a blue. I think that I used in that. But you can see how very light and airy they look when they're dry, and that's what I'm after. I want this really light watercolor look, but I want it to be permanent when it's dry. So that's why I do that. Okay. So we're gonna use. Um, let's see. What one shall we use? Maybe we'll use this one because it's got some visual texture on it. And what I do is, uh, because this is easy to, to mark out, it's five inches square, so it's very easy to mark. Because if you have a ruler, like one of these, you can find the two and a half inch marking. And so that's what I'm doing here with my ruler. So I'm getting down to the two and a half inch marking and then I use a pencil and I particularly like the mechanical pencils with a lead that's not too super soft I like something that's a little harder lead because I don't want it to show very much and you're probably not gonna be able to see my lines well yeah you can okay so I mark what I'm after is to mark the center and to mark the lines from both horizontal and vertical and I'm not going to guarantee that these are going to be perfect since I'm doing them on camera. But very light. And then I'm going to go corner to corner. And I find it easiest for me to put the ruler above me. And then I can um, my, find the corners. And I can also make sure that it, this is going to go right through the middle of the X formed by the horizontal and vertical. Okay. So I put the diagonal in one way, I put the diagonal in the other way. And this mat that I'm working on is lovely for many things, but it the sticky quality of it, um, it works for so many things, but when you're trying to pick things up, it can be really annoying because they really do want to stick and be stuck. So you have to get used to it. All right, so this is how I lay them out, okay? This is how I start. When I'm gonna draw a mandala, this is usually the way I start. Um, 
Okay, sorry, looking for the question. When you fill the almost empty containers, how much wash, uh, how much paint, and how much water? I let the paint get down to it's about a quarter of a quarter or less of the container, and then I fill it up almost to the top with water. You just it's it's really one of those things that you just have to kind of try and see what you like. You know, how much pigment do you want left in the in the wash? So you just kind of have to play with it. I know it's not a very exact science. So yeah, it's not a very exact. Okay, so I'm going to use this compass. This happens to be the Quick Bow six and a half inch compass, and I like this particular compass. Any compass will do. I like this one because it is easy to use. Because if you pinch these little, um, I don't know what they are, clamps. We'll call them clamps. You can move them easily, move the legs of the compass in and out very easily, and I love that. For fine adjustments, you can roll this little wheel, and it will make the, the legs move out in subtle increments. But for quick adjustments, you just pinch them and move the compass. It has a lead in the, the you, there, these are little leads, and you can put those in to the compass. You can also take that out, and you can put a pencil in it. So this is the attachment right here that you put on, you remove the lead and you put this piece on the bottom of that one leg and you can put a pencil in it, so or a pen or whatever. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the point of the compass in the center where all those lines cross and I'm going to I'm going to actually move this mat off of here because it will be too sticky to do what I'm going to do. All right, so I put the pencil point or the compass point in the middle and then I very lightly, very light pressure with the graphite part of my compass. And I know this is light, but I'm doing it lightly on purpose so you'll see what I really do. And then I just start moving it out in increments. And this is totally dependent on what, how you want to set this up. And I generally don't plan anything. I just, you know, I'll draw a circle and then I may do, you know, a very narrow circle beyond that. But I like holding the compass in one spot rather than twisting the compass around. I hold the compass in one spot and move the paper. It's a really nice compass and it's not expensive. There is a link to it in the description box below the video. It's not an expensive compass. There are far more expensive compasses out there, believe me. So I do, I kind of go back and forth between, you know, making narrow, you know, having the space narrow from one circle to the next. And sometimes I'll make a you know, make a big jump. And you can't go too big because this is not a great big circle or not a great big square of paper. And before I do the last one, I check because sometimes my paper is not, you know, sometimes I'm not so accurate with my cutting, even though I try to be. Okay, and so that's pretty much how I lay out the compass or lay out the mandala to begin with. You can put as many rings there as you want. So at that point, then I start laying out this mandala with my pencil. So I'm going to switch um, cameras here to see if we can get a better look at what I'm going to do. All right, so we have, there is our compass laid out. And I know it's a funny angle, but where my where this camera shoots from is over my shoulder, so it distorts the perspective. Um, it, it's a really cool compass, yeah. And I like moving the paper. It just, to me, really helps um, 
helps the process be easier to do. So one of the things that I do um, is I look through, I mean, this is just kind of when I'm stuck, you know, and I don't know exactly what I want to do. I'll look through here and I'll find one of these patterns and I'll use it as reference to kind of get me started. You know, like maybe I'll start with a center that's kind of like that one or like this one or whatever. And I'll show you some of those in a minute. For this one, just so you get the idea, um, I'm going to just go for it and then we'll just see what happens, okay? So again, I'm using the mechanical pencil. I'm going to start, I always start in the middle and I just sort of decide. I make a shape in one of the sections and then I repeat that shape. Okay, so I just repeat the shape. And these are hand drawn. They are not meant, to, if you want them to be perfect, then you need to draw them in Illustrator or Photoshop or something like that. I like the look of the hand. I like them to be not too perfect. Okay, so there is the center of our compass, or our, um, the center of our mandolin. It does have a very fluorescent green look on this camera. It does. It's not quite, it, the cameras that I have, one shoots things that are not quite as bright as they should be and the other camera shoots it a little brighter than it actually is so you know it's one of those things you got to take it's like okay which one shoots shows the best shot all right so then I often will take I will bisect us I'll take a section here like this and just by eye I'll put in a little reference mark to kind of bisect that section and then I'll just decide what I want to do in this section. So maybe for this section I want to do, you know, I never know what I want to do. Maybe I want to do this. So you make a mark in one section and then just repeat it. Keep the lines light as you go. Because when we ink these, um, you may want to erase and if you get too much graphite on here you know it uh, it doesn't want to come off too easily so I don't worry about it a whole lot but I try not to make it any harder for me than it has to be all right so that's what we have at this point All right, so then I go to the next the next ring and decide what I want to do. So maybe maybe here I'm just going to put a circle. If I do that, I don't get out a compass. I don't get out of anything to draw around. I just go by eye. And sometimes those circles end up to be, you know, if they start out kind of ovalish, then that's how I keep them. All right, so we have the next you know pattern and I have not planned any of this this is just this is just however it's coming you know however it starts it's how it goes uh, we're gonna keep this one pretty simple so let's see for the next go round maybe we'll do um, maybe what we'll do is I'm going to divide this. I'm going to go about a third of the way on each side of the line. Again, I'm just giving myself some marks by eye. Maybe it's more like a quarter of the way. Your eye will get to where it's pretty accurate when you're doing this stuff. You got to learn to trust your eyeballs. All right, so on this section, let's go. And I'm gonna come. I'm gonna give myself. I'm gonna come down about a quarter of an inch on this line. And I'm gonna just draw a heart shape. Now you don't have to give yourself those landmarks. I just find it easier.
Now this can be a heart or it can turn into a flower. But whatever you do, don't go too, don't press too hard with your graphite. I have drawn, I would say at this point, several hundred mandalas. And I, even if I try to make two of them the same, I have yet to be able to do that. It is incredible to me how many designs can be inside of you. But they are. You just have to open up and let them come out. Okay, so there is another pattern shaping up. Well, it is easy because you just make one mark and then repeat it. That's what's easy about it. That is what the easy part is. Um, you have to trust yourself that that it's okay for you know to do that. All right, so let's do um, some scallopy things because we'll use the mark that's already here so and let me tell you not everything I do is you know I don't like every single thing I draw but you know but I like most of them So it's make a mark. Once you have the first shape or mark drawn in a space, then just repeat it. So as I said, we're keeping this one pretty simple and I'm working pretty quickly. I When I draw these, the one thing that I try to do is not be in a hurry because it's part of the process of slowing down. It's kind of like working with Zentangles or that type of patterning. You slow down and just breathe as you're working, okay? Slow down. I don't know. Question in the chat, is there such a thing as a signature mandala? I don't know. I really don't. That's a good question though. Good question. All right, so out here, let's um, just thinking, what do I want to do? See, that's where you get in trouble. You start thinking, and that is, it's not good to think. Just go for it. Um, what do I want to do? So after you have it laid out, then you can start connecting things together and changing it and, you know, making it, uh, making it a little, a little more the way you envisioned it, perhaps, or you'll get an, another idea as you're doing the next step. Okay, so we kind of have something laid out. You kind of get the idea, right? That's the idea of laying out a mandala. So I have some other ones that are laid out here. Um, here's one. And this one, I'm going to show you where the inspiration for this one came from. As soon as I find it, here it is. That was quick. Okay, this is the inspiration mandala that I was working with, and this is the one that I ended up drawing. So you can see they are similar, but they are not the same. OK? 
Okay, similar but not the same. Which is pretty fun. This one that I showed you on the finished card, this one I used the inspiration from this design. So again, similar, you know, if I turn it this way, maybe you can see it a little bit more at the center. So again, similar, but not exactly the same thing. And then if you turn it, you can get, often you can get a completely different look by how you twist and turn the pattern. Or if you set it on point. Okay? All right. Um, and I have another one here, this one. This one came, was inspired by I have to look. I don't even remember exactly which one. This one. So again, you can see that, I mean, this looks quite different from this. And yet, I started in the center pretty much the same way that I started this one. But I'm just looking at it. I set it up with the lines the same way that I started with that the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines and then added the circles just as I showed you and then I just started looking at this and kind of envisioning what I was going to do with it and then just kind of use this as an, as an idea. Okay, <clears throat> so once you have a design laid out, so let's say that this is the one we've laid out because I took a little bit more time on this one. So this is the one that we're going to play around with a little bit. Thank you. But you can see all the graphite lines there. You can see all the circles are still in place. You know, everything is still there. All the guidelines, everything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Jelly Roll pen. And you can use black or pick one of the colors from the set. This is the classic Jelly Roll set. So I'm going to do that because why not? Um, I'm going to pick this, I don't know what this color is, kind of a, looks, by the cap it would appear to be kind of maroon. So we'll check it out and see what color it really is. It's kind of a maroon color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the lines. Okay, hang on just a second. Okay, thank you. Um, easy peasy. Bye-bye. Yeah, if you can't behave, you're out. That's how that is. That's how that works. Um, but thank you for getting my attention. All right, so here we go. So I go, I start in the beginning again, in the center. And then I just go over my graphite line. Everyone is welcome here until they misbehave, and then I have a zero tolerance policy for that. And I do mean zero, because this is Drama Free Friday, and I intend to keep it drama free, right? <laughs> now, it does take a little bit for Jelly Roll pins to completely dry, so if you are left handed, and you have a challenge, you know, laying your hand in your work as you're working, you're going to have to be really careful. Or um, many times I will work with my little finger up and, you know, to stabilize the pen, but to keep my hand off the surface. So very often you'll see me like this, or you'll see me holding the paper 
and I know my hand is in the way. Pretend this is my other hand. I'll have my hand on the edges while I'm working to keep it, you know, where I'm not in the um, where I'm not in the mess. All right, so we're going to keep on going here. Now, everything that's going on here is just the very beginning of these pieces. And I don't know that we will even get this done today by any means. We may stretch it into next week and work on it again. But we're going to see what we get. If you'd like to see the process from beginning to end, it's probably going to take two, two, class, or two um, streams to do it. But I work from the center out because I have the best chance of keeping my hand out of the ink. And sometimes I still um, smear the ink, even with my being very careful, I can still smear it. Once the Jelly Roll ink is dry, I find that it is quite permanent and stable, and I have no problems with it. But the issue you do have is that it has to, um, it does have to be fully dry for that to happen. And you can see in the light, I don't know, we'll see if we can catch it here. I'm trying to catch the reflection. Don't think you can see it, but I can see that the light is re reflecting off the ink. And if it's doing that very much, you know it's wet. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. And it, sometimes I'll turn it one way. I'll work, you know, counterclockwise. Sometimes I work clockwise. It just, I, I don't have an explanation for that. I just do it. So have any of you in the chat drawn mandalas yourselves? Is it something that you enjoy doing or uh, maybe you've done it and didn't care for it. I'm interested in your your experience about mandalas. Maybe you've done them with sand or some sort of impermanent material as opposed to ink and paint and stuff like that. All right, so we have just about all of this little round of patterns. And I do one complete round of the pattern, whatever it is, before I go to the next one. Lynn says she's drawn them and she loves the process. In mouse pudding, I forgot your name, but he says mouse pudding is a male, right? Is a guy? Rosetta says no, too hard. <laughs> Kate has and she likes it. <laughs> Uh. All right. Now, another thing I find with the um, these is that I tend to roll off the tip because sometimes they get a little gloppy on the end, the jelly roll pins. All right, so moving to the next pattern, whatever it happens to be, I'm going to do this one. Peter. Thank you, Peter. Gosh, I need to write that down. Where did I write that other one? See, this is this is what happens to me. I write things down, then I don't know what I wrote it on. Here it is. Okay, I'm going to write it down. I probably did one time. It usually takes me a few times to remember somebody's name. Then once I get it, I usually have it for good. The compass really helps, I have to say. It just gives you the guidelines. I also draw them completely freehand. Um, I'll show you some examples of those if I don't forget. And I know last week I thought about it after I went off the air. Somebody had asked me if I had ever made a circle book. 
and I was and I promised I would show that now if somebody can remind me it actually fits in quite well with this class today this is not really a class but you know what I mean with the subject matter at hand they are not hard to do you just simply do them one little stroke at a time they are very simple yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Peter. <sighs> Joy says, I have never done them, but this has made me interested to try them. Oh, good. Yeah, the compass is really good. It really helps. And if you don't want to do them yourself, um, I, that is one reason I created that book, uh, the Mandela Melange. I did that because I people requested it. They didn't want to draw them. They just wanted to color them and decorate them. So there is that option as well. And sometimes I just print out my own stuff from that book, my own book, and I'll just, you know, do them, you know, use the patterns that I've already drawn and see how I can make them different this time. As you get out, especially on something small like this where I don't have much border, that's where you can kind of get your hand in the ink. So you have to really start paying attention to what you're doing here. It's a stretch of my concentration sometimes, let me tell you. But once you have already drawn the pattern in graphite, it's, it's really quite easy to just follow the lines that you already drew. And if you're not exactly on every single line that you did, it's okay because we're going to erase them anyway. Hi, Meg. Hi, Kitty. Nice to have you join us. So if you miss something I'm doing on YouTube Live, you can scroll back in time. I'm assuming you guys know that, but if you don't, you can. So if you want to go back and see what I did, you can only go back a certain length of time, but um, but it's nice that you can. You have that ability to scroll back and see, even in real time. Your husband's not going to be happy. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hi, Christine. Hi, Vicki. Nice to have you here for the first time. Yes, the, the practice, I mean, I use them as, as kind of that same kind of thing, Peter. Uh, okay, Sharon says, how do you keep them from bleeding when you gloss over the gel? When I gloss over the gel... I'm not sure what that I'm not sure what you mean, Sharon. Can you ask me that? Give me more information about what you want, what you're asking. Um, gloss over the gel. I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm ready to go to the next set of patterns. But I do like them being hand drawn um, rather than, I mean you can do this in Illustrator or Photoshop where you can set up a section of the patterning and then you can just, you know, copy and paste or on some programs there's a, a there is the function that you can just tell it, you know, repeat this around the circle and Bob's your uncle, you got it, you know, boom, boom, boom. Sorry, I'm trying to do this where you guys can see it. 
I like the hand-drawn look about them. And for me, when I'm using it for the, uh, the purpose that I'm using them for, that's what it's about. Okay, so let's go, let's see. We're ready to go to the next section. It's really quite a lot like Zentangle in many respects. So you took a workshop from, from, oh, I can't, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. <laughs> Mandel, a teacher in California, how cool is that? Cool. Did you enjoy that? And if you don't watch out, you start getting real quiet doing this kind of thing <laughs> because it's just, it's, a, it's the byproduct of doing this kind of uh, stroke type work. And if you make um, a, what you might call a mistake, you just make something out of it. I have done many of that, that um, sort of correction or adjustment, let's call it. Let's call it an adjustment. Okay, so we got that part. The difference between Mandala and Zentangle. Um, if you look, if you look up online, um, I think you're going to see a lot of difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah, the, the these do these do tend to be the mandalas do tend to be much more symmetrical. Zentangle not nearly as much. Zentangle is more about patterning. Um, okay, so Linda says she thinks maybe Sharon meant that when she uses a gloss medium and it smears the gel pens. Hmm. Um. Usually the mandalas are round. Yes, I believe they are. Now, somebody that the person in the chat that has taken the workshop might be able to actually answer that better. Mine are always round in some form. I mean, I start them out as round, but once in a while I will do one that is um, kind of, you know, I'll set this aside for the moment. That is, they all start out as a round. Um, laid out in the round, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But sometimes I do them so that they have more of a square, you know, a square design or, you know, they end up kind of square-ish. Does that make any sense? Maybe not. Um, I have another one here that's... See, I mean, even though that's... You can tell that that's been laid out in a compass, you know, with the circular, circular layout pattern it still has a little more of a squarish feel to it um, this one see so that has a much more of a square type feel to it bye Dana nice to have you here 
Thanks for joining us. So, you know, I guess, I guess the answer to the question is kind of make it what you want it be, <laughs> what you want it to be. <laughs> How's that? Um, if you put, I, I'm going to go back to the gel pen question. If you put gel pen on something and you have, you're putting a finish over the top of it and for some reason it um, smears on you. What I would do is I would, now you can't do much about it at that moment, but the next time you use it, I would use a product called Krylon Matte Finish if it's something that you can spray. And I would put that Krylon Matte Finish um, over, you know, whatever you're working on that has the gel pen that's smeared. And I would do several light coats of that and let it sit. It doesn't take very long to dry. But my experience is, and I used to do that, use that same product when I was oil painting. And there were certain kinds of um, things that would, that would smear. And sealing it, you know, just putting a barrier with the Krylon matte finish seemed to usually do the trick. And then I could go back over the top of it with varnish. And I've done that with art journal pages and things like that. So that would be my best advice about that. Okay, so when she put uses gel pens and then puts glossy accents, it bleeds. Yeah, so my best advice on that would be to spray it with the Krylon matte finish. That's what I would do. Hey, Jen. Yeah, so I would spray it with several coats of the Krylon matte finish and then um, and then go over it and see if that doesn't, I bet that will help. Okay, so what I'm going to do in order to make this circular is I'm just going to dot the outside circle. Because it's going to make it just a smidge easier for me to cut out. And because I'm doing it by hand, it uh, quite likely will not be a perfect circle. Even though I have a drawn circle there underneath my pin, <clears throat> it's likely not to be um, a perfect circle. But that is not what this is about. We are not into perfection. By the time you get finished, it absolutely uh, doesn't matter because your eye is never going to pick up unless you decide to study um, what someone has done and drawn. Unless you decide to study it, you're not going to be able to pick up Initially, just looking at it, the, you know, oh, that's not symmetrical, like, you know, this other thing is symmetrical, but that's not. Oh, that's a mistake. You know, your eye isn't going to pick that up. Okay, so we're just about through inking this one. And they do not have to be as intricate as this one. The one that we drew earlier much simpler but you can turn that one that I drew earlier you can turn that into a much more complex mandala should you choose to do that with the way that you finish it up so let's compare the two okay so here's this one very simple shapes very very simple 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 shapes And this one has a, is a little more complex in its design. But neither one is right or wrong. Okay, it's just the way it is. Now, as I look at this one, um, I'm tempted to make some adjustments in it. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it alone. I think I'm going to leave it. Yes. 
and I'm going to hit it with a heat gun to see if I can force the gel ink to get dry. Thanks, Sherry. <clears throat> Like I said, if you don't want to draw your own patterns, that was why I did that ebook, the Mandala Melange ebook, so people could just print out the designs and just start coloring them and using whatever kind of medium they wanted to use. So you can absolutely do that if you prefer not to draw your own. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for a minute, and I'm going to show you some of the other ones that I've drawn. Just a few, not too many. I'm going to get right in the way of the camera, probably. If I did, I apologize. Um, here are some of them. These Now, these are not drawn, these are not laid out with, whoops, wrong camera, sorry. Um, I should really show them to you the other way. So you can see the detail. <clears throat> okay. So these were done back in 2010. So these are getting some age on them. These were not laid out with the circles. These I started in the middle and I just built the mandala out from the center without any. I just had the outer circle and the inner, um, the middle of the circle and that was it. Then from there I just built it as I went out. Same thing on this one. This was someone else's. Um, let me get the ones that are... I was involved in an exchange at one point, and so some of these are... I'll show them to you. I'm just going to show them to you after I show you the ones that I did. So you can see the difference. Okay, so these are, again, these are drawn from just a center point and then just drawing the designs as I went out. Okay, and many of them, this is colored pencil. Most of these are colored pencil. Same thing on this one. This one was just done with different colors of gel pens. So, no colored pencil added, just changing different colors of pens. This one's done on black paper with, with um, I think I laid it out mostly with the white gel pen and then I went back and used some sparkly watercolors, just inexpensive sparkly watercolors. I don't know if you can see the, you can see a little bit of the shimmer. So, same thing. Started with the center point, just laid it out as I went out. Same thing on this one. What you do is you just, you work by, you, you train your eye to see what you're wanting to, you know, you're gauging distances from the center. So I just put a dot, you know, um, a quarter of an inch from the center and do like eight dots from the center out and then just keep going. And so you just, you learn to just gauge according to the center and how far you are from the outside edge. So as I said, you know, you just you just keep going and going and going and going and going and I even if you try to make them the same, it's not possible. So this one was done with a gold jelly pen, gel pen of some kind. And then in this case I you let some of the black show through. So that added to the the color. I love this colorway. That was one of my favorites. Just because I love it was just different from all the rest of them. And then this one. So I'll show you the ones that I did not do that other people did and show you the difference. 
Now, this is called a Zendala. So this is a combination of a Zentangle, of Zentangle design and a mandala, or mandala. So you can call it Zendala, Zendala, whatever you want to call it. So you can see it's not built from the center out. It is a circle, circular form, divided into sections and then patterns fill the sections. Thank you guys. Um, this one, this was another one that was, um, it, the exchange was a, Zendal, was a Zendala exchange. And so the concept was not necessarily to do the mandalas as much as it was to do, you know, d divide the space up. We all started with the same size circle and then divided the space up and patterned it and colored it and whatever the way that we wanted to. So maybe this will kind of help, you know, give you the, give you some idea of the difference between Zentangle and Mandalas, because this is kind of hybrid of both. And so there's that. So none of these that I've shown you in here with the Zentangle type designs, none of these are ones that I did. These were all ones I received from other people. done with a variety of different mediums. This looks like um, it might have been marker and then had some some uh, sparkly paint on top of it. This was done by Lisa Cousineau. <coughs> Pardon me. Lisa Cousineau owns Artist Cellar Stencils. So that is, um, I think a lot of people don't realize what a really phenomenal artist she is. They're all done on cardstock. Yeah, just plain old cardstock. Now this one is on photo paper, so I think this must have been a photograph that, that she took of the original and then printed off. So this has a little bit more of the mandala feel because it tends to be more symmetrical. And so does this one. You know, a little bit more of that. Um, symmetrical kind of feel but yet it's not it it leans more toward the Zentangle kind of design hi gay so that is um, some of those then let me get that book and show you the circle book because I don't remember who asked me about this last time. So I'm going to show it this week and maybe they'll, maybe they will um, be watching this week. So this is the circle book. Okay, so this is actually the cover. This is a mandala. So this is the, actually the mandala. I did it on um, watercolor paper. Then I cut it in half. Okay, so I cut it in half. The pages are all full circles. Okay, they're full circles. It's all watercolor paper. Folded them in half, and then I bound it together using a Coptic stitch. All right. So that is, when somebody asked me if I had done a circle book, this is my version of a circle book. So that lets you know what that's about. All right, so um, this one, I'm not totally convinced. I would let it, I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer. So maybe we'll come back to this one next week. Um, but because I want the, it has to be, the gel ink has to be totally, totally bone dry because the next step is to take a pencil with a white eraser and erase all the graphite out of it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside. We're gonna to go to this one that I already have drawn. 
So what I do now is, you can color these in a variety of ways, of course. There, for every way there is to do something, there are a hundred other ways to do something similar. Thank you guys, I'm glad you like them. Glad you liked seeing that. Um, but this is what I used for these because I happen to like them a lot. This is the ink tents. These are ink tents pencils. And uh, the set that I have is a set of 24. They do come in larger sets. 24 is what I have. And so that's what, obviously, what I'm using. So what I do is I take my little... Um, design and then I pick out whatever colors I'm going to use on it and I, I don't pick too many colors like I might pick six colors or something and we'll just pick some I don't know what we're going to use oh thank you guys so let's just pick some colors here and normally I would stay with the the cool tones I would stay to the cool colors but you know I'm just going to pick some random colors here so there's four. Um, five, six. Okay, I've got six colors, so we'll see what we can do with these six colors. So I work with the ink tense pencils, which when fully dissolved are waterproof. Now the key to this is they have to be fully dissolved. Okay. This color is Shiraz. I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to just go around the edges of the center. Like so. Okay, so I'm just going to lay down some color. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I'm just laying down some color. I'll do it over here. Maybe that will make it a little easier for you to see. I don't have the perfect camera set up yet. We're working on it. I don't have it yet, but we're working on it. All right, I'm going to take another color for the next row, and this is iris blue, and I'm just going to color in a little bit of iris blue in each of these next little sections. You don't have to color every single section. Okay, so I'm just going to put in some color there. And the next one, this one is fuchsia, so I'm going to put in a little fuchsia. And again, I work around the, um, from one row at a time. I know I may fill in three or four rows, but I work all the way around. I don't work out this way and try to match my colors. I will work all the way around one pattern, row of pattern, and then go to the next one. Okay, so then what I do is I have a, I just have a paper towel and a water brush. This is a Pentel water brush, which I really happen to like. I get, make sure the water's flowing. Barbara Mary Gang, hey! <laughs> you made it! <laughs> Glad you're here. Alright, so I start liquefying that ink, and then as I pick up too much on my water brush, I'm just dabbing it off. See? I just dab it off on the paper towel. And then I just make sure that that ink is liquefied. You cannot let this dry on the paper and try to come back and re-liquefy it because it doesn't work. So you got to liquefy it as you go. If you let it dry, like I've got a line right here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a line right there. That's where I liquefied the ink and it already had soaked into the paper. By the time I came back, no getting that out. No getting it out. All right, so I'm gonna let that alone. I'll come back and play with that later. And then I'm gonna to go to the next little row of designs. And I just keep dabbing my water brush off if it starts tracking, pulling too much pigment too far you know, further than I want it, I just dab it off on my paper towel and I just keep on going. I love the way that it looks. I love having the color underneath because it changes the way that the ink tense pencils look. I particularly like it when they're not all the same. Um, 
pulled out something else to show you here in a second while I was thinking about it. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, so we have the next row color showing. And then I'm going to go to the next row. So we started out with Shiraz, then we went to, what was that? Iris Blue, and this is Fuchsia. Just to give you an idea of what the colors are that I'm using. And I just randomly pulled them out. I really didn't know what I was going to do. And that is often how I approach these. I just pick some colors and just start playing with them and see what happens. This does get to be very meditative. So if you do not like to be quiet, if you don't like, you know, that whole meditative sort of practice, um, this is not going to be the thing for you. If you do like it, it is a wonderful way to calm your mind. If you are crazy busy, which I am most of the time, this is a really good practice for me to just calm down. Okay, so you can see the whole idea. Now again, if you come back and try to reliquify that ink, if you have not totally liquefied it to start with, <laughs> and it's dry, it's not moving. This is not like water, traditional watercolor pencils or anything. They don't keep moving. So, Inktense Pencils. All right, let me show you this other little um, book. This is one I started a long time ago. I've been working on it for ages. And this, you can see, I used much more a much stronger uh, assortment, let's say, of acrylic washes in the background. So when I, and these are all done with ink tints. So when I go over the ink tints, or over those acrylic wash backgrounds with the ink tints pencils, you can see how they change from one section to another. And I particularly love that. So let me show that see if I can get this this is these are bigger so let me see if I can get them get it the camera backed out enough that you'll be able to see it okay that's as much as I can back out without you having to look at my shelf which is right up here <laughs> All right, but these are all done, these are all started with the acrylic washes. And you can see, if you look around the edges, you can see that I was not particular about them. Right? Good, I'm glad. Inktense pencils are, I, I really love them. I mean, inktense pencils, I find people either really like them or they really don't like them. They also come in a block form. I have a small set of the blocks. I love both. Um, I particularly love the ink dense pencils because you can use them on fabric or paper. But as you see the acrylic wash background change, you can see how it shifts and changes the colors. There's actually a link in the description box below the, the video to ink dense pencils. If you, um, if you want more information about them, you may be able to find them in, uh, I know you can find them from any online art store. I know that. So they're, they're not hard to find. This is a much heavier watercolor paper that I used on this, and most of it is cold pressed. So sometimes you'll see the way the color picks up, and it's very, very, um, and it's not expensive watercolor paper, so the colors didn't blend a whole lot, but I like that. Um, to use the blocks, I just use, what I do is I use the watercolor, or the water brush, and I pick the pigment up straight off the block and use it that way. Or, if you want to cover large areas of, 
you know, on a paper or in a journal or something, you can just use the side of the block and then wet it with a large brush. Now this one has had very little done to it, and so you can see the big difference between what this looks like and what this looks like. And this one needs more work on it as well, but you can see a big difference just in that amount from one to the other. So here is the wash that's not had anything done to it. So you get an idea how much color is on there. Same thing here. This one is one that's just barely started. It's got some color on it. Same thing on this one. But you can see what a difference the colors make and how they shift and change with having the wash in the background, which is what I love. So, okay. Back to this. Okay, so we'll do this a little bit longer, and then I think if it sounds good to you guys, we will do this again next week. We'll just keep working on what we have here, and I can take these a little bit further in their development. Does that sound like a good plan to you guys? I'll let you tell me what you think. <clears throat> okay, so this color is violet, so I'm going to add some violet. And you'll notice that I am not filling the shapes with the pigment. I'm just putting in small amounts of the ink tints because I am purposely wanting to get a blend of colors. So I'm having it darker at the edge and then dragging it out toward the tip. Okay, so we're all in agreement. So we'll, I will force myself not to work on these, <laughs> which is very hard to do, mind you. Because uh, once I start these, I'm like, I want to see what it looks like when it's finished. But as you could clearly see in that little book I just showed you, I don't finish everything. <laughs> I should. I should. But I get, I'm kind of like the magpie, you know, oh, something shiny. Let's do this. Oh, I want to see that. I look through magazines and books and go, never thought about trying that. I got to try that. I got to see how I can adapt that thing to whatever it is I like to do. You know, it's, it's a, it's a curse. I tell you, it's a curse. <laughs> All right. I'm going to come back in here, put just a little bit of blue in these little sections. I'm sure you guys are not like that. I'm sure every one of you finishes every single thing you ever start. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> All right, this is teal green. I'm going to put a little bit of this in here. So we'll do several sections here all the way around, then we'll liquefy that. And then I'm going to go back to the fuchsia. Now I'm going to go to Shiraz and put that in. One of the things I really like about the Ink Tense pencils is that the lead, or whatever they call that, it's not the lead, the core, color core is really strong. Um, Prismacolor pencils I love, but Prismacolor pencils tend to really break. You know, the color core breaks like crazy. You find, I find with the ink tense pencils that the color core is very strong and it does not tend to do that. So that's one of the things I love about them. <laughs> Barbara Mary says, I stop and start all over the place. It makes me feel extravagant. <laughs> and Rebecca's a magpie too. I'm so glad I'm not the only one. Kate's been working on a crochet blanket for her bed for about 10 years. Hey, I'm feeling like I am in good company. You guys make me feel so much better. So much better. So are any of you working on a mandala as, uh, as I'm doing this one? Or are you just watching? Doesn't matter. I'm just curious. Okay, so we got that little ring. 
little ring of pattern. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try, I don't know if we'll make it, what time is it? 3.06 here. We're going to color a little bit longer. The show today may be cut a little bit short. I have a, a um, thing to go to that is going to last the, oh, quite a bit of the weekend. And it's going to start late this afternoon. And I have to have a little bit of time in between this show and going to that. So, so we may knock it off just a little bit early here. Okay, one more. I know, I saw that. I saw that. That was Vicki BR. That was great. Yeah, she sent happy mail to Dee Dee that she'd been working on for three to five years. <laughs> Oh, we love our Vicky, I'll tell you. That was great. I think Dee Dee was so surprised that um, she, and so happy. That was one of the fun parts of watching that stream. Dee Dee is Inkwell or Dee Dee Willingham. You can find her on YouTube or you stream. She streams live on Monday. She streams early on Monday morning, my time, like at before 8 o'clock, my time. On Mondays and usually on Wednesdays and she is the happy mail queen let me tell you but you can find her and then she puts her recordings up on YouTube so you can find her and she is a fabulous artist if you have not subscribed to her channel you should I'm trying to get her on here for a creative chat one night or one day we just haven't been able to get it together yet but we're working on it we're having trouble getting our schedules together. Because I'd love to ask her some questions. Although she'd probably have me doing collage. I'm just pretty sure that that's what she's going to have me do. And I am not very good with collage. So could be a good thing for me to do, you know. Yeah, Vicky had a whole bunch of life stuff get in her way and... Um, Whoops, sorry, I'm way off camera. I apologize for not, I wasn't even looking in the monitor, people. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm just kind of doing my own thing, not, it's like, oh, I don't care if they can't see, I can see. Yeah. Bad teaching. I'll hold this up for you to look at in just a second. But I just want you to see, um, a different way of using the ink tense pencils starting with the background of not necessarily you know it's a variety it's kind of a variegated or ombre background so I don't care what that is I just don't want it to be too dark to start with and um, I'm working on a course another course that's all about mandalas it will be coming out it's going to be a few months yet, but I'm doing a whole course of all different things to do with mandalas. So those of you interested in mandalas might be interested in that course. All right, so you see the idea? So I'm just reading the chat. So some people are, but some people are not. Some people are just watching. <laughs> and there I am in the Zen zone. <laughs> okay. So let me do a few more rounds of color here, and then we're going to call it a day here. All right. So I'm using. I'm just using the same pencils. The pencils I have out are fuchsia, sea blue. We haven't used that one yet. Uh, teal green, iris blue, Shiraz, and violet. So those are the colors I've used so far. Um, and I. That's how I tend to work. I tend to use. You know, pick out colors and then use them throughout the whole um, mandala. All right, so let's throw in a little sea blue. And if, you know, if uh, the points get to where I can't, you know, can't work with them, then I will sharpen them. But this does not work in a, just your traditional pencil sharpener. 
it's a little fatter than like your Prismacolor pencils, so you may have to have a different sharpener. I have a color laser printer. What's the best paper? Um, you know, I, I somebody's going to have to answer that that knows more than I do. Uh, the only thing I know is that, or I'm pretty sure of, is that you would need to use paper that was marked for a color laser printer. That's pretty much the only thing I know about that. Somebody in the chat might know the answer. Bye, Lynn. Thanks for coming. Um, have I ever blended ink tints with a blender pen? I have not because the reason that I've, that I've used blender pens, I guess, um, why haven't I used a blender pen? Let me just think about that question. <clears throat> I guess I haven't used a blender pen because I didn't feel that I needed it because the water activates it and when it's dry it's permanent. So I guess the answer to the question is I haven't ever done that and I guess that's why. It's kind of a kind of a pitiful answer there but I think that's the best answer I could give you. Okay, the next one I'm going to do. Let's see. Let's go back to I'm trying to make the colors different, you know, not put two of the same color right up next to each other. So I'm going to use, this is teal green. So I used some of that blue. That was, what did I say that was? Sea blue? Yeah, sea blue. Now I'm going to use some teal, teal green. Someday I'm going to get the whole set of the Ink Tense pencils. Now, let me tell you about Ink Tense pencils too. If you really like them, I would spring for the biggest set you can get. And the reason is because if you buy the set of 12 because you're just going to try it out and see if you like it, um, and then you go, oh, I like that, but I'm going to go to the set of 24. Well, the set of 24 includes the set of 12. Okay? You see what I mean? It includes the set of 12. So you actually only get 12 new colors when you buy the set of 24 because the first 12 are included. So if you go to this to the side the set of I think there's a 48 and a 72, if you do that, you're just rebuying the same colors you already had, which is fine except that, you know, I didn't realize that. That kind of annoyed me a little bit. So, if you're going to go for um if you're going to do that, you know, if you're going to, um, sorry, trying to think and pick colors at the same time doesn't work very well. So if you're going to, you know, really get into the ink tense pencils, I would just get the 72 and call it done so you don't have to rebuy colors that you already had. I wonder if that makes sense, what I just said. <laughs> oh, well, I know what I said. And my mother used to say, take me for what I mean, not for what I say. So, there you go. That's one of those things I swore I would never say. You know, how that is when stuff that your mom always said to you, and you're like, I'm never saying that because she told it to me every time I turned around. I'm never saying that. And you turn around and you say it to your own children. It's like, oh, I can't believe my mother's coming out of my mouth. How did that happen? And this is what happens when Barb doesn't have something specific that she needs to be telling you she starts rambling okay so here's the next rounds of color <clears throat> charlie has decided he is tired of being in there he is now complaining <clears throat> ah good point a little creative i don't know your name but she says um i'm assuming little creative is she Correct me if I'm wrong. Says the blender pen is good if you're using paper that might break down with too much water. That is great information. I even have one of those blender pens. I have the Dove blender pen. I have not done that, but what a great, thank you so much for sharing that. I could have used that on uh, that cardstock. I bet that would be very helpful. Yeah, Charlie is now complaining because he has been locked up long enough. You'd think he'd been in there all day long. 
even though he has not, he would have you believe that he's been in there all day and abused and neglected to boot, locked up, abused and neglected. However, if the door was open, that's exactly where they would both be. <laughs> the sponsors are getting restless. Yes, they are. Because that's what they do. Their time, their clock goes off between two and two and a half hours. For the most part, you can just about set your clock by it. And they're going to um, start complaining that they want out. And that is exactly what it sounds like to me. Out. In their melodious, sweet little voices that they have. All right, we're going to finish this, the section that I have with pigment on it. We're going to finish this up. And then we're going to get out the sponsors, have them close out everything for us, because that's what they do. Hopefully Charlie can get on the table today without coughing. Ugh. It's a curse, I tell you. I put him up here to say goodbye to everybody, and he will invariably decide to start coughing. It's like, oh, that's lovely. Lovely. <laughs> you just have to laugh. Yep. Hey. <laughs> that's right. Hey. <laughs> If you guys are not here live, you don't know what we're talking about. Heck, sometimes I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> you got to come live. Be here on two, on Wednesday. I almost said the wrong day. Be here on Fridays at 2 p.m. See, I don't even know what day it is. I've, I've had so many things happen in this week. I don't even know what day it is. It's Friday. It's Drama Free Friday. So come hang out with us on Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and then you can get in on the chat. We even had a troll today. I had to get out the ban hammer because I have a zero tolerance policy for nonsense. I like to have fun, absolutely. I like to have a good time. But that kind of stuff, nah, nope, not happening. So we had to get out the band, the big band hammer today. Sometimes it happens. Whoops. Where's my mouse? Hang on. If the screen goes black for a second, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> no worries. It was just a little, uh, computer was taking a little quick siesta there for a second. I did. Smashed them. Oh, Little Creative, did you ever tell me what your name was? Oh, you found it. Oh, Frederica found a set in the thrift store. Oh, my goodness. April. I got to write that down. How many times have you heard me say that today? And anytime I ask someone for their name and you don't want to give me your name, just say, just call me X, you know, whatever. You don't have to give me your real name. I'm perfectly fine with that. But I just always feel better if I can call someone by their name. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch. We got three more petals on this. And then one more round. Of this band back here. Yeah, it's almost time to get back to doing Santa Clauses again. Claus man will once again live up to his name. That's my husband. He carves Santa Clauses. That's why he's called Claus man. And we do a very limited number of Santa Clauses in basswood, northern basswood. And we do them usually in the, well, we try to get them done in the early fall. 
doesn't always happen, but I try for that. So he will be back in the studio carving again here before long, which means I will be painting before long. And um, when I do that, sometimes I will broadcast that. And then because it's so mindless, I can't watch the chat. And because it's so, I mean, it's not mindless. That didn't come out right, but anyway. I have to concentrate on what I'm doing. I can't interact with the chat, is what I'm saying. And because of that, I often um, start telling stories. And sometimes I've gotten myself in real trouble telling stories. <laughs> yes. But that's what happens. And so when I do things like this, same thing, because I have to watch where that brush is going. So I start rattling, and next thing you know, I'm telling some kind of story. Most of them are true. <laughs> ah, hey, Jan. Okay. Tell, tell Mr. Bear hello for me. All right, uh, how many do we usually make in the Santa Claus line? It varies. It really varies. Sometimes we do, I mean, there have been years we've done 20, and there have been years we've done two. So it just really depends on um, how much time we have, you know, and how involved I am. I'm pretty busy this year compared to last year. So, you know, I don't know. We'll just see. All right, I'm going to get um, the sponsors. We'll see how this goes, people. Oh, Marcy, aren't you glad to be out of there? Aren't you? Yes. Oh, the abuse. The abuse. Cat abuse once again. Uh-huh. The abuse that takes place in this house. It's a crime, isn't it? I oh, know. Let me get the camera down here. We have a sponsor cam, you know. We have a sponsor cam. What doing, Charlie? Alright, there he is. Mr. Chance. In living color. Yes, Mr. Chance in living color. Are you coming up too? Can you behave today? Can you behave today? Oh. oh, so far so good, folks. So far so good, except we're cat wrangling. Yeah, Chance always tries to hog the camera. Let me see if I can get him back a little bit. There we go. There we go, boys. Whew. There he goes, trying to hog the camera again. All right, Chance, just stay, just stay right here. What do you think? What do you think? Huh? What do you think? Whoops. Sorry, terrible camera work. I know. I know. Up close and personal sponsors. <laughs> sponsor cam. <laughs> the sponsor cam. I'm telling you, if, if you're... See? And then you can see all the monitors. These are two of the monitors that I watch. I have an, I have two more going on. So when I seem a little crazy, people, it's because I am, because I'm trying to watch all this stuff. <laughs> if I seem a little crazy, it's because I am. <laughs> all right, so Chance is not going to get up here. Here we go. Put yourself up here. Just don't hog the whole space. Here we go. Charlie's got his hunt tongue hanging out for you. That means he's very contented. He loves you guys. He only sticks his tongue out for people he really likes. <laughs> Don't you? He only does that for people he loves. <laughs> Can you see this? Can you see it? <laughs> oh my goodness. That cat, these cats crack me up. I gotta say, these cats absolutely crack me up. They are a pair and a half 
They are a pair and a half. Yeah. So I'm going to let Chance get up here and look at everybody. Charlie's just got that tongue just hanging out. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> ah, oh, good, good. I hope you do. All right. Um, I'm going to close this out and say thank you so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed what I do here today, um, don't forget to check out howtogetcreative.com. That's where we have the membership site. That's where we have the Mining Your Muse course. That's where we will have the future Mandala course, etc., etc., etc. So if you like what I do, go check that out. And as I usually try to remember to say at the end of the show, remember to get creative today because, you know, it's easy. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.